Hi, so we're going to get started here with the fundamentals of thyroid hormones. Uh, very, very simple, straightforward biochemistry of these hormones. And you'll notice a couple of important points in the presentation, uh, which I'll mention uh, about how inflammation begins in the thyroid cells. So let's get started. So if, if you, I know you do, but if you want to understand Hashimoto's and the origin of Hashimoto's, it's very important to have a good foundation for um, uh, your knowledge base, which is thyroid hormones. So there's four important thyroid hormones to get a handle on. There's TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. There's the primary thyroid hormone called T4. And there's another hormone which is made from T4 called T3. And then there's reverse T3. So TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, all it does is it stimulates thyroid cells to increase their production of thyroid hormones. There's a sort of a balancing effect or a, a seesawing effect between the TSH and thyroid hormones. So if thyroid hormone production increases, as you'll find sometimes in what's called hyperthyroidism, then TSH is going to go down because it wants to slow down the stimulation or production of thyroid hormones. And if the production of thyroid hormones goes down, then TSH in the blood is going to go up in its attempt to stimulate thyroid cells to make more thyroid hormones. So the key to understanding Hashimoto's is that when thyroid hormones are down, how does TSH stimulate the thyroid cells? There's a couple of ways. On, the, on every membrane of thyroid cells are what are called iodide traps. They're also known as sodium iodide symports. And these traps, which basically just simply uh, absorb or hold on to or bring iodide into the membrane of the thyroid cell to make thyroid hormones. This, these traps are upregulated. In fact, the number of traps also will be increased by the stimulation of thyroid stimulating hormone. And here's another way that TSH stimulates thyroid cells to make more thyroid hormones. And this is what relates primarily to Hashimoto's. When iodide is um, within these traps, um, iodide is not the trace mineral that the thyroid cells use to make their hormones. Iodide must be transformed or changed into iodine. And the way this happens is by the thyroid cells producing hydrogen peroxide. So when hydrogen peroxide increases, uh, the thyroid cells increase its production of hydrogen peroxide, it will convert iodide to iodine. And what stimulates the thyroid cell to increase hydrogen peroxide is TSH. So TSH does two primary things to increase the production of thyroid hormones, and that is increase the activity of these iodide traps to absorb more iodide and to increase the production of hydrogen peroxide within the thyroid cells. Let's talk about these hormones for a moment. T4, also known as thyroxin. It's the primary thyroid hormone, also known as the mother or pro-hormone. This is just an illustration just to give you a little idea about the thyroid hormone called T4 has four atoms of iodine attached to the hormone. It's called the pro or mother hormone because all the other hormones, all the other thyroid hormones are made from T4. It makes T3, also goes to make reverse T3. When you see on a lab test T4 or thyroxin, that value represents both the bound T4 and the free T4. The bound T4 is primarily bound to a protein called TBG or thyroid binding globulin. So remember that T4 in a blood test is a combination of the bound and the free T4. The next hormone is T3 known as triiodothyronine. It has three atoms of iodine 
it is the thyroid hormone which is primarily the one which stimulates the metabolism of the various cells of the body. T3 can also be bound to protein and it can be free. So <clears throat> for the different thyroid hormones we have different lab tests. We have one for TSH, we have one called T4 which again is the bound and the free. We have the free T4 because we want to know how much that T4 is actually free and available to make the free T3. So one last point, ask you a question. What's the most common cause of low thyroid hormones or hypothyroidism? And it is Hashimoto's. And in another couple of presentations or videos, you'll understand why this is. And the other major cause of low thyroid hormone production is nutrient deficiencies. Of course, if the thyroid cells do not receive the nutrients they need or require to make thyroid hormones, then thyroid hormone production is going to go down to the point of causing hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. I'll explain that later on. So what's the big fish from this uh, first presentation? TSH stimulates thyroid cells to make hydrogen peroxide. So the, the most important uh, section of that presentation was that uh, TSH stimulates the production of hydrogen peroxide in its uh, process of um, improving thyroid hormone production. So the next question then is, uh, what increases levels of TSH? And if we can answer that question, then we'll understand how to address thyroid inflammation. So let's go on to the next video, which is the cause, the primary cause of Hashimoto's, the primary cause of thyroid inflammation.